Talking about women and leadership, um, we're joined by Carrie Barrett, who is a media and communication trainer, award-winning journalist. She spoke at the New Jersey Business and Industry Association's seventh annual Women Business Leaders Forum. Good to see you, Carrie. Great to see you. Thank you for having me here. It's our pleasure. Hey, listen, uh, you coach people in communication. In my other life, I do it as well. But we came to it very differently. It's not about me. It's about you. What do you mean you were going to be a vet or a veterinarian <laughs> because you didn't want to talk to people, and now you're helping people talk to people? Yeah, you want that, and that's why I'm good at it. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So I used to have this debilitating fear of public speaking, and I don't mean the normal sort of like I don't really want to get up in front of these people, but I can muddle my way through. I mean, back of the room, puddle of my own vomit, likely in the fetal position, very possibly passed out fear of public speaking. And so I started in pre-veterinary medicine. Right? I don't have to talk to people as much. It's mostly animals, and they don't talk back, and they don't judge, which was the biggest problem. Well, about a year and a half into that, I realized that the only thing I got along with worse than public speaking was chemistry. <laughs> so I had, a, I had a nasty breakup with my pre-veterinary medicine major, and I took a year and a half off. And I finally was like, I, I got to get back in the game. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll do communications. Namely, there's no math or science. And number two, maybe I can get a handle on this fear of public speaking that I have. And so, you know, I was going to have to take a couple of public speaking courses. And one of the ways that I could jam a bunch of credits into my schedule and make up for that lost year and a half worth of time was by getting an internship. Well, in the news industry, as you know, Steve, it's a 24 seven industry. So I could jam that time into early morning, overnight, weekends, late night, the whole shebang. So I got an internship at a local TV news station, and it was love from day one. Now I had to figure out how to overcome that fear of public speaking. And that's what eventually landed me here as a media trainer and a communications coach. So let's do this, because, uh, again, not just women, but disproportionately women who are watching us right now want to get out there. Difficult time. It was you do this late into 2021. The pandemic has impacted all of us, but they want to start their own business. They want to move up in their organization, but they need to be better public communicators. And our, my good friend and colleague, Mary Gamba, who's been with us for a long time, 21 years, when I first met her, she didn't want to speak in public. She turned red half the time when she spoke. Now she's my co-host on another show we do on leadership. She's out there leading the seminars, meaning where you start and how you start is not how you ultimately if you will, wind up as a public communicator and everyone can grow. Is that a fair assessment? It is absolutely a fair assessment. And frankly, if you saw some of my very first newscasts, you'd realize that I was far from a polished speaker when I first got behind the desk as well. And confidence is a huge part of that. And, and, and understanding that you're never going to feel 100% confident right out of the gate. Your first public speaking ventures, whether you're on a stage or you are on a camera, will likely always be bad unless you're just naturally gifted or you're like 15 and you grew up in front of the camera. And so it's taking those very first steps and it's, it's understanding the skills and the performative aspect. So even if you're not feeling up to snuff, you trust that you've done the work and your butter, your stomach may be full of butterflies, but you can fall back on the fact that you understand the, the performative aspect of it, if you will. I don't like to use that word, but well, that's stay on that. what it I'm is. I'm sorry for interrupting. As we're talking about communication, I interrupt you. But, but Carrie, here's the thing. In, in the work that I'm doing, talking to people about digital communication, I'll say, look at the camera. No, look at the camera. No, the camera, <laughs> the little dot, whether it's green or red, yeah, whatever yeah. it is. How much of your work now, because you're talking about performing, performing in public, if you will. By the way, we're not teaching acting. It's right, right. telling a story, sharing, getting passionate. How the heck are you coaching people to commu communicate into a little dot and saying, telling people that's eye contact? <laughs> it's a tricky one. And I, I, I'm decent at it because I had to do it for 20 years in the news business. I understand looking into that black hole or the red dot or the green light or whatever it is that you see yeah. is the way that I'm connecting with the audience on the other side, right? It feels awkward usually when you start, but nobody on the other side of the lens sees or feels any of that. All they see is you 
looking at them in the eye. And if you're missing that opportunity, you are hands down missing the easiest way to gain rapport and trust with your audience. You know, if you were having a conversation one-to-one -one with someone, you know, face-to-face -face, in person, you would never have the conversation <laughs> like this because it's awkward and rude. Right. And after a couple of seconds, the person would wonder what the heck is wrong with you. Well, that's the same thing when you're speaking on camera. So I actually will tell clients who are getting used to it, practice for five minutes a day, get in front of the camera and just riff. Whatever it's about, just practice looking in the lens, put a pair of googly eyeballs next to it if you need to, so you can remind yourself that there's a person on the other side. And then I remind people as well, you know, if you are trying to speak to an audience of millions or thousands or hundreds or even dozens, you speak to all of them, you speak to none of them. So imagine one person on the other side of the lens and talk to that person and that's how you connect with everyone. But hold on one second, watch this for a second, folks. This is where the camera is for me. Uh, our great uh, camera operator is here, uh, Scarlin's here. He's right behind that camera. He's the, there, that camera's there. Carrie's here. So Carrie, if I conducted this interview looking at you on my screen, I'm looking at you, so I'm making eye contact with you in my head, but am I really making eye contact no. to you, with you here? Here is making eye contact. Yes. So, so the yes, point, yes. Carrie, it's, it's unnatural, but it doesn't matter how you see it, it's how they see it, right, Carrie? It's all about the receiver. The whole point of communicating via camera, digitally, video, whatever it is. I mean, it is the ultimate one-to-many communication. It's just, it's on steroids. And if you master it, you've got a great opportunity from moving out of obscurity, struggle, fear, whatever it is, and coming out on the other side. But you have to remember, it's all about the receiver. It's never about you. Hey, Carrie, before I let people go, for everyone, and I won't do communication coaching because she's the coach today, for all of you who are hiding behind, oh, I only want to be on audio for this meeting. I, I don't really want anyone to see me because of my background, because whatever. Carrie, real quick, 20 seconds or less, why does everyone need to be on camera unless there is some extraordinary circumstance? Because, like I said, it is the ultimate way of one-to-many communication. Putting video marketing content out there is a 24-7, 365 endeavor. It takes no holidays, takes no weekends, takes no sick days. If you're not meeting your audience where you are, where they are, excuse me, you're not meeting them. That's Carrie Barrett. She's part of our Leadership and in Women Initiative um, Leadership and women, women in leadership with the New Jersey <laughs> Business and Industry Association. Carrie, I want to thank you so much for joining us. I learned a lot from you, and I know others did as well. All the best. Likewise. I, I love animals, but I'm glad she didn't become a vet. I'm Steve Adubato. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> one on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Atlantic Health System, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. IBEW Local 102, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, Prudential Financial, Choose New Jersey, Summit Health, and by Johnson & Johnson. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Globe, and by ROINJ.